Perfect. Welcome back to the shop. Today, let's do a review of this can crusher off of Amazon. This is a, a pneumatic can crusher. First of all, let's see if it works. Hey, that's not bad at all. Okay, that's my address if you want to send me, you know, roses or whatever. Here's everything you get. You get the frame that does the dirty work. Here's your air cylinder. Here's a little plunger that goes on the end to crush the cans. Some air fittings, some bolts, and a little key, Allen key to put it together. Some air tubing, and your air valve. All right, here's the tools that are necessary for this project. You either need a razor blade or this tubing cutter. I highly suggest this tubing cutter. I'll leave a link in the description. It's two bucks. Order it at the same time. That way your tubing comes out right. You need this Allen key, but it comes with it. You're going to need a croissant wrench, a 17 millimeter, 14 millimeter, or a 9 16 which is the same thing, 12 millimeter, and a 7 millimeter wrench. And then you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. All right, let's get started. Okay, step number one is to thread the air fittings and the mufflers to the valve as pictured below. So let's pull out our little air valve. Looks like you got three holes on one side and two on the other. So we'll orientate it the same as the picture right here. And let's get our little air fittings out. Okay, it looks like the fittings came with uh, Teflon on them and they even came with uh, little O-rings for sealing. And here's your air fitting, so it came with one of those. These are your little uh, mufflers or air filters, and they don't really need any sealing because they're not sealed anyhow. I'm gonna go grab a couple of wrenches. All right, so here's how the sizes are working out. 9 sixteenths for your little air truck nipple, and these two air fittings. 12 millimeter for your two uh, little air mufflers, and 17 millimeter for these two air fittings. Let's put our center fitting in first. You don't have to go too crazy on any of this stuff. Okay, that's 12 millimeter. Let's tighten these up. And these fittings are the straight fittings. We'll use our 14 millimeter or 9 16 which is the same thing. And we're just going to go until we feel a sharp rise in torque. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Okay, step two says to install the air valve onto the frame. It looks like we want us to use these two screws. This guy here. All right, let's use our awesome double drive from the last video. So you can install this air valve. You can put it on this side or this side, whatever is handy to you. And get the bolts pushed through. Okay. Now we got to get a couple of nuts. Same bag has a couple of nuts in here. And they've got little nuts with integrated lock washers here. Looks like the little flange nuts are using seven millimeter. Okay, that's what the valve looks like. Okay, step three says install the air fill fittings onto the cylinder. Pull out these little plugs. Don't get any schmoo into your cylinder or you'll score it up. Start them by hand, make sure you're all lined up. Don't over tighten these because these are tapered threads. And if you overdo it, you'll crack these aluminum blocks. Now they want us to mount the cylinder onto the frame. And they want us to use these screws and lock washers. And we'll just turn it on the side so we can get to the bottom ones more easily.
Don't let the weight of the assembly lie on these plastic fittings with this button here. Okay, let's go ahead and tighten them all up. We got them all started. Okay, those are tightened up now. If we take a look at our diagram, looks like the far end goes to the top hole, close end goes to the bottom hole. So to seat these, all you're gonna do is push them in. You feel a little O-ring in there, push it past that, that's sealed. And to release them, all you're gonna do is pull back this collar, you'll hear a little click, and you can pull the tube out. So they're not permanent. Okay, you feel, feel O-ring. Okay, that's all the way in there. And this is a little swivel joint. So you're gonna to wanna to hold that steady as you plug it in. Okay, all we're gonna do is take a look here. We don't wanna kink our lines at all. I'm gonna put my thumbnail right here. And then we'll just take our cutter. Now we got a nice square cut. And we'll just push that in. And we'll take our remaining mount and let's hope it's enough. We'll stick it in this fitting here. Okay, that's seated. We'll run it to about right here. Let you guys take a look at that. Okay, now it says you want to thread our little head onto the end of this. Bet you it would pinch your hands. I'm just going to thread this on here. Yeah, that's fairly well bottomed out. So it looks like you got a little jam nut here. So let's thread that over. Wonder what size that is. We're having a little issue here because I don't have a wrench big enough in there. And then my bigger wrenches, there's kind of like a jump in size here. So we're gonna have to go with the tried and true croissant wrench here. You probably could have done most of this assembly with a decent croissant wrench. It's not a lot of room in here. What a pain in the butt. Let's see if we can sneak around back, get a little bite. Okay, that's tightened pretty good. Let's put our little hands pinching sticker on here. Cover up this little shipping dent. I don't know where it could have got that. Perfect. Looks like we just got two, two mounting holes that are conveniently covered up by our piston now. All right, I wanna mount this thing to this little plank of wood here so I can chuck it up in the vise. And uh, after digging through these, you know, the screw bone yards here, I was able to come up with these number 12 screws and they are one and a half. These are number 12 by one and a half. That's what I'm going to use. But you could go all the way up to five sixteenths lag screws like these here. Okay, the first thing I want to do here to get to my mounting holes that are hidden behind the plunger is let's just pull that down. There you go. They got plenty of room. And you want to mount this type horizontally. I've seen videos where people mount them vertically, but let me show you why you don't want to do that. On the back here, you have a little ejection port. So after the can is crushed, the can will fall right out the bottom. If you mount them vertically, you gotta fish them out. And that's dangerous because, you know, your hand's right under here. Who knows if this could malfunction? I don't know if that's even possible, but I don't like reaching in there if you don't have to. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my can crusher uh, ejection port is overhanging my board and that the board isn't interfering with that. Let's check one of our old drill bit sets. Looks like we want to use a 5 30 seconds. You don't want to use a 3 16 because uh, I, don't, I don't have it, so. Okay, we'll use the number three Philippe uh, bit here. So it fits nice in our number 12 screws. Beautiful. Things mounted like a rock. And these screws won't interfere with your plunger. 
even if you were to use lag bolts within reason because the plunger is round and also your can isn't going to hit it either because your can is round and this is near the top of the stroke so you're good. This thing completely assembled. Now I could have had my air assembly on this side and I might prefer that. I could always move it over, just loosen these two screws, pull out these two hoses, put it over there, run the hoses back, no big deal. I like this setup mounted to a piece of wood because now I don't have to have this mounted somewhere all the time, you know? I can uh, save up a batch of cans and then uh, when I feel like it, throw on a little music, chuck this up and go to town. All right, let's go over to our half Campbell Housefield and half Craftsman air compressor. Just didn't explode yet, that's pretty good. All right, let's give her a dry run. All right, let's do a standard can. Oh, Jesus. All right, here's what came out of there. Here's a uh, 16 ounce can, my favorite flavor of Monster. That's awesome. Let's do a few more. Okay, here's a 16 ounce can. Here's what it looks like after, 12 ounce can, what it looks like after. Yeah, about six and a quarter, or some people might call that nine. <laughs> and uh, here you got less than an inch. So let's see here, four and three quarters, or you know, some people might call that eight. And uh, that takes it down to three quarters of an inch. So huge reduction in space. Let's do 10 in quick succession. <laughs> Let's see if there's any truth behind that hands pinching sticker. Okay, so let's see if this is your hand here. Oh yeah, so that's gonna be an issue. All right, let's see, you know, if you get your thumb or something else in there. Let's see if there's a way for me to catch this. So don't, uh, don't get any fingers or limbs or anything else in there. If you guys are anything like me, you're curious as to what happens when you accidentally got a full soda and you pop it in there. It says recycle it. Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna back you guys up so we don't get soda all over the camera equipment. I really don't wanna do this. Let me think of all the repercussions first. Uh, let me see here. Should I push this with the stick? Okay, let's see what we can do. Well, nothing happened that time. I'll give you guys a closer look. <laughs> With my luck, this will be the time it goes off. But if it does, it's for you guys. All right, once again, full soda can, 100 PSI. I'm actually pretty happy that nothing happens. All right, let's see what else this is good for here. Put this here, let's see. Perfect. Uh, that's actually pretty good. It's got like, you know, a little hint of carrot plus all the other residue. All right, you guys, that's it. Thanks for watching my little can crusher video. 
Link in the description from Amazon, it's about 100 bucks. If you buy it, I make a few bucks. It doesn't cost you any extra, it really helps out the channel. And we got some more bomb shelter videos coming your way. Cheers. It's actually pretty good. Catch you guys next time.